Hello, it's Don Michelle and welcome back to my channel. Today I am very excited, very excited for this box that is sitting on my desk right now. This was a deck that was sent to me by Liminal Eleven to share with you all because it so aligns with so many of the things that I do. And I'm real sad that it's taken me this long to get to opening it, but you know how that goes. The Citadel Oracle deck. So this is their like deluxe edition of this deck. So we're gonna take a little peek inside and see what is in this gorgeous box, which looks like a book. I mean, that's just kind of amazing. I have a couple of these that I need to be sharing with you all, um, but I definitely wanted to start with this one because like, look at this, like it's, it's so fantastic. It like doesn't even fit, but there's a map. We have uh, the different locations. The attention to detail here is amazing. I am super excited to dive in. So I'm gonna pull everything out of this box and we're gonna take a look at it all together. So one of the really exciting things about this is it is actually a tabletop campaign. Now, full disclosure, I have not had the opportunity to do that. Today, we're just going to be taking a look at the decks uh, because there is actually two in this deluxe edition. We're just gonna take a peek at them. Maybe we'll do a few pairings in my collection just to see what they want to play with, but I am definitely interested in taking a, a deeper look at the tabletop campaign. That is something that maybe I will actually do in a whole nother video because I feel like that's something that I would really need to experience before I could really share it with you all. But as somebody who is into gaming, that is super exciting for me. It does also come with a coin, which is beautiful. So we actually have a coin that we are using in my uh, fellowship as well. That's the tarot adventure that I'm doing in the membership on my channel. So I'm really excited to have a new one. That's going to be really fun to play with. We will take a quick flip through the book at the end, but I think this is primarily uh, in reference to the campaign. So I'm probably not going to dive too deep into that today. What we are going to dive into is these two decks. So this is the Citadel, a fantasy oracle. This is, I do believe, mass market. And in this deluxe version, we also get to the deck of emblems. Now I know a lot of people are actually using both of these decks in my fellowship so I'm really excited to jump in and see what they are all about. So like packaging, we're going to talk packaging really quick. Like y'all know I I'm really not a huge fan of these types of boxes. Um, they don't really work well with how I store my decks. However, isn't this the most beautiful box? Like it's really beautiful. I really love it. It looks like there has been maybe um, some issues. The And the issues that I had were that there were paper inserts, like cardboard inserts in there. Uh, this had a little insert to probably keep it upright during, you know, shipping and as it's being moved around and things like that. But I don't think that's necessarily needed. Inside you can see the cards and they are edged in red and it is matte and that's exciting and there's a little guidebook in here. This actually doesn't really bother me. Oh, there's another one in the bottom. Um, so I'm going to take that out and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we do have the little um, instruction booklet, which is just your typical, okay, I say typical, but you know, your book with the meanings. And I'm excited. I love that we have this available to us. Like it's pretty chunky. I'm excited to dive into this, but there's keywords on the card. So I'm like happy. I don't necessarily need to get into the guidebook unless I really want to, which definitely makes me happy. This deck has a unique shape and I do actually really quite like it. Now I haven't worked with it. Obviously it's still in order. It is not round though and I can get my hands around it. So already like I'm excited about that. The backs are really beautiful. As I said, we've got this gorgeous matte red edging and the cards are absolutely stunning. So let's take a quick flip through and then I, I really just wanna like pair. You know, how, you know how I am, right? So we have the aspirant with ambition, diligence, setbacks, the assassin with ruthlessness and conviction. I love, and I've seen this deck around. In fact, I've had many, many friends who are like, you need to get this deck out and start playing with it because they know me and they know that this is right up my alley. A lot of these, sort of archetypal energies that are on these cards do relate to game related stuff. So that makes me really happy, but I don't think it's limited to that um, because the catalyst is just radical change taking control, right? Anything can be a catalyst. Any body can be a catalyst. We have the diviner with di divine timing and evaluation, the fate accepting help and guidance, the founder, foundations and community. I do love that there's two keywords because you know I love to use the keywords as spread positions, so that works really well for me. We have the air with unseen potential and hesitation. The hound, loyalty, chains, promises. That one has three. The king, control, reversal of fortune. The poet, relationships, vulnerability. The queen, determination, sacrifice 
great keywords. The sleeper, cause and effect and clarity. I love that. The spy master, knowledge and distrust. Love that one too. The waker, awareness, reflection. The wise one, tradition, order. The acolyte, new projects and learning. The alchemist, balance, invention, destruction. The archer, biding your time, planning ahead. These are so cool. The astronomer, discovery, augury. The captain, taking command, teamwork. The cartographer, a crossroads exploration. Love that there's a cartographer card. The champion, achievement, downfall. The enchanter, deception and trickery. The guide, inheritance, correction. There's a lot of cards here, which is amazing. The orator, communication, confidence. The patron, mentorship and finances. The priest, preservance and faith. The scholar, investigation and research. The sentinel, determination, certainty. Love that one too. The warrior, perfectionism and burnout. The botanist, such a great card. Parenthood and legacy, interesting. The Forgotten, Missed Opportunities, Fear of Failure. This link looks kind of alien to me, which is fantastic. I love it. The Gambler, Loss and Risk. The Hunter, Surefootedness, Predestination. The Merchant, Self-Worth and Trade. The Miser, Stubbornness and Inflexibility. The Muse, Generosity and Naivety. The Pathless, ooh, interesting. Difficult Decisions and Lack of Direction. The Pilgrim, Opportunities and Growth. The Sailor, New Influences, Wanderlust. The Shepherd, Celebration and Family. It's a beautiful card. I love the artwork in this deck too. The Smith, Overthinking, Taking Action. The Thief, Seizing the Moment, Selfishness. The Vengeance, Overcoming Slight and a Choice. The Walker, The Unknown, A Journey. The Adventurer, Responsibility, Expectations. The Brawler, Lack of Empathy and Confrontation. The Chiromancer, Delivering News, Collaboration. The Dancer, Self-Expression and Strength. The Herald, Small Regrets and Longing. The Masakari, Hiding Your True Self, Projection. The Musician, Inspiration, Gratitude, your barred card, I love it. The Painter, Productivity, Creation. The Puppeter, Explanations, Apologies, interesting. The Runaway, Secrets, Running from Problems. The Storyteller, Viewpoints, Control. The Tailor, Attention to Detail and Pride. That's fun. The Twins, Self-Protection, Dual Natures. The Weaver, Rediscovery, Transition. And The Witch, Experimentation and Rebellion. Those are amazing. Also, I'm sure you probably noticed, like, there is some metallic accent on all of these cards. This is bling the way I like bling. <laughs> it's very tastefully done and it's not over intrusive not like some of those decks that do that cold foil stamping and there's just so much of it you lose all detail in the cards um these these are stunning these are absolutely stunning oh i'm so excited so excited to work with this one okay let's um let's just give it a shuffle because even though it's weird shaped i can't get my hands around it and Yep, I was pretty sure I could shuffle it, which is fantastic. You know, nothing makes me angrier than not being able to shuffle my deck. So I'm real excited, real excited. Can't believe it's taken me this long to actually go through this deck. Shame on me for that. This one shuffles beautifully. Love it. Also, I feel like it's gonna look really cool when I start pairing it with some stuff. Okay, what do we wanna play with? Because this is really what I wanna do. I know this. there's like a system here and that's really exciting, but also I just I just wanna play with the pairings. That's really, that's really why we're here, right? I know this will come as no surprise to anybody, but like, I just have to. I just have to try the Notoria Tarot and Light. I feel like I know this deck is on my channel all the time now, and I, I would apologize, but like, it's one of my most used decks, so that's why it keeps showing up. So I just wanna see kind of how these, how these two go together. I'm probably gonna pull in the Goetia too and see how that one works, and then we'll grab a few others. So we have the Pilgrim with Opportunities and Growth with the Six of Pentacles and the Page of Wands. I mean, that's pretty fitting. I like that. 
We're also just gonna see like aesthetically how they work together. They're both kind of black and red and white, which is amazing, I really like that. I feel like the energies are gonna be really cohesive. And I'm really curious because I have a bunch of decks that I actually work with alongside the Notoria. I am really curious if the Citadel would be a good match for that because I don't currently really have an archetypal deck in that little deck family and this might be the perfect one to pull in. So I'm really excited about that. Look at this one, the warrior with perfectionism and burnout with the devil and the hanged man. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely feeling that. The gambler with loss and risk, the king of wands and the six of cups. Mm, I'm getting that, I'm getting it. I like it, I like it. We'll just do a few of these and I'm gonna swap it out for the Guisha and then we're gonna do a few other. Uh, the weaver rediscovery and transition with the two of swords and the seven of cups. Yes, I, I'm, I'm liking these together. I'm liking these. Let's do one more with this one. Hiding your true self in production with the King of Pentacles and the Four of Pentacles. Interesting, interesting. So this is the next one that we're gonna try with it. This is the Goetia, the Tarot in Darkness, uh, AKA my Dark Urge deck. <laughs> Again, relating to video game stuff and specifically Baldur's Gate. Although, as I've mentioned, this is also a deck that I use for looking at the dark or the shadow of things. So I pair a lot of these decks together and I feel like the Citadel is gonna fit right in there beautifully. So we have the guide with inheritance and correction with temperance and the four of swords. Oh, that's kind of perfect. I like that. Kind of course correcting and then having that guiding energy with the temperance. The hound, loyalty, chains, and promise. Three of cups and the ten of swords. We don't necessarily have hounds, but we do have animals on both these cards. That's quite interesting. Yeah, I really like these together too. The Sleeper, Cause and Effect, Five of Swords, Ace of Wands. Perfect. Again, with the two keywords, I could definitely be tying those in together. Um, but I feel like these, these work really well. I'm going to try it with my more decks that are like kind of more gamery. Th these are my gamer decks in a sense, but they have a very specific purpose in my collection and they relate to a very specific game. So I definitely want to try some more kind of uh, generic that's not really the right phrase but yeah and let's for fun let's pull in the notoria because i absolutely love working with these decks together and i am very curious to see how they work so the smith overthinking and taking action with the four of cups over here with the goisha and the lovers with the notoria that's kind of cool i do love working with these together the Assassin, Ruthlessness and Conviction with the Moon and the Four of Swords. Yeah. Oh, this might be a new one to add to this family. I'm kind of loving it. I am kind of loving it. What do you all think? Definitely let me know in the comments below because I think these actually go together really well. Four of Pentacles, the Musician, and the Page of Swords. Beautiful. Okay, let's just do one more with this and then I want to pull out another deck that sits in this family as well. The Catalyst, Radical Changes and Taking Control with the Four of Wands and the Seven of Wands. Oh, that's interesting. I like it. Okay, so the next deck I want to try pairing with it. Again, it's not really going to be any surprise because it shows up all the time too, and that's my Diablo Tarot. Okay, so these are actually like, they're really, really big cards. I have talked about how big they are, and I love them anyway. But because they're so big, I, and I don't want to overpower the Citadel, and I do tend to just use one of these cards. Like this tends to be a one card draw type of deck for me and then I pair other things with it. Because of that, I'm, I am just going to pair one card each. Apparently, I am also going to pull out every red and black deck I own because I think they're going to go beautifully. Uh, but here we have the Knight of Wands with the Acolyte, new projects and learning. Again, I feel like this would be amazing to pull into the whole deck family that I have going on with these. <laughs> this one, the Shepherd with the Hanged Man. I mean, yeah, that's awesome. The Ace of Wands with the Forgotten. Oh, missed opportunity, fear of failure. Yeah, I'm really liking these together. So I feel like the Citadel could maybe give me that archetypal energy and then I could use the um, Diablo Tarot as that focal point of where to harness that archetypal energy and then use all my other decks that exist in this family in order to flesh out that message. That would be really, really cool. I might have to um, try that at some point in like a one-shot reading because I think that these are gonna go really beautifully together. All together. Temperance, love this temperance card with the sailor. That's interesting. Interesting little pairing. And you know, thinking about these, like, so thinking of the Nine of Swords as the wise one, tradition and order, what can the Nine of Swords 
teach us as being the wise one. And I do kind of like that energy pairing the archetypal decks with the tarot. So here we have the twins and we have the fool, right? It was just a single character. But what would be the fool's other side of that? What would be the yin yang to the, to the fool energy, right? It'd be the world. And that might be an interesting thing to explore. Page of Pentacles as the champion. Yeah, I could totally see that. The sun as the astronomer. Absolutely. Two of wands as a scholar. I mean, for investigation and research, I think that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, let's keep moving along because I have more decks. All right, we're going to stay in the gamer world just because I love being there um, for one more moment. And we're going to try this one paired with the Dungeons and Dragons tarot. All righty, so let's see how we pull these together. So we have the merchant with self-worth and trade between judgment and the world. That's pretty cool. I'm always looking at, you know, first and foremost, messaging, right? If this is my focal point, this is what I'm keying into, and then the tarot expands around that, then I'm really looking at the mes messaging. So how does the king of strength and how does the seven of strength tie into the miser energy with that stubbornness and inflexibility? I mean, actually, both of those cards tie into that really well. That is primarily what I'm looking at when I'm doing a pairing. Um, outside of that, you know, the aesthetics are, are important. I do like things to work, look nice on the table because that is a part of my craft. It's a part of my art form when it comes to working with tarot. And so that does matter because the art does matter to me, but that's not the main thing. I know, I know, I, it's, that sounds terrible to say out loud, <laughs> um, especially here on my channel, but it's actually true. I'm more, more concerned with the messaging that I'm getting and are the energies flowing across the decks and I am at, you know, whether or not they look aesthetically pleasing together, but I would be lying if that wasn't important. It is, it's just not the most important thing. It's up there, it's up there. It's just not the most important thing. I do really like these together. Um, I don't feel like, I was a little bit worried with the, the stark black and white of the Citadel that they might draw attention away in a sort of negative way from the Dungeons and Dragons tarot, but actually I think they work pretty well together. All right, let's pull out another black and red or primarily black and red deck. And this is the Horror Tarot, which is another one of my favorites, AKA my Castlevania deck. <laughs> So this deck, again, similar to some of the others that I've talked about, um, it does relate to a specific video game, a specific world and story for me personally, even though it's not necessarily inherent in the deck. Um, that's just the way that I interact with this deck and the energy that I pull into it. So I'm curious to see how it plays with the Citadel. I think it's going to be beautiful. Uh, the, my one quibble with this deck is I actually cannot read the titles unless I tip them into the light because they are red foil and tiny, and that is just not okay for like old people. Um, but here we have the hunter with sure-footedness and predestination with the queen of wands and the four of wands. I like that. The king. Page of cups. Mm, king of swords. I think that's what that says. Yeah, these are good. I like these together. And again, even though this is the horror tarot, to me, it relates to Castlevania. So that's the energy I pull in when I'm working with it. So it's going to have a different feel because it feels like it feels like video game vampires to me, which I am all about and I totally love. This is definitely one of my favorite decks, particularly of those that like, you know, have that kind of like make my gamer heart happy, as I say. And I think this one works really well with the Citadel, actually. Again, aesthetically speaking, they're beautiful together. Um, but I am liking the sort of messaging that I'm getting. Again, looking at this is my focal point of vengeance. So over overcoming slight and a choice. And then we've got the seven of swords, four of pentacles with overcoming slight and a choice. So if this is vengeance and this is overcoming the slight and this is the choice being made, like that's, that's interesting. Or the other way around, right? It would depend on the context of the reading. This is really cool. The runaway, I mean, that definitely gives me runaway energy. I like it. Okay, let's just do a couple more. Then we're just, we're about out of Citadel cards, so we're gonna have to shuffle and do it again because I still have more decks. I love the horror tarot. And the Citadel, I think works really well with it. My apologies if things are in a different spot than they were before. Apparently I bumped 
not only the camera, but the table as well when I was getting the Diablo Terra out. Um, this is a great one, I think, because this is the Bianco Nero is very much a standard or a traditional Rider Waite Smith deck. So I thought this might be really interesting to pair together because a lot of these other decks we've looked at, they kind of do their own thing. They don't necessarily stick with tradition. So I thought this one would be a fun one. So we have the Herald, Small Regrets and Longing with the um, Six of Pentacles and the Chariot. Ooh, that's cool. Also, like, I really love the black and white vibe. I clearly, black and white is my thing. So I am really loving pairing the black and white deck with, or the more black and white decks with the Citadel. I think it looks really good. But this is just straight up black and white, and that is so cool. I'm definitely here for it. Um, the Warrior with Perfectionism and Burnout with the Eight of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. Uh, yeah, that's a great message. I really like that. Okay, we'll just flip through a couple of these because again, you know, I feel like this is a, just a traditional Rider Waite Smith. It's going to just pull in those energies really beautifully. I really love the way um, the Bianco Nair is actually illustrated. So I think it works really well with the Citadel. And we can definitely pull in those more traditional meanings through this little pairing. So we have the King of Cups and the Moon with the Scholar, Investigation and Research. I mean, this to me feels like the King of Cups is investigating and researching the emotional landscape, right? Like getting really in touch with what's hidden beneath the surface. I really love that. I really love that. The Poet, Knight of Swords and Four of Pentacles. Yeah, this is a gorgeous pairing. I really like this one. The Champion with the Two of Swords and Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, that's really cool. That's really cool. All right, let's just do one more. The Twins, Nine of Cups and Three of Swords. Beautiful. All right, just for fun now, I want to pull in like a, I was going to say like a silly deck, but a fun deck. This little Cosmo Beings tarot deck. This again is another black and white and red deck. Not quite as big as the Diablo, but oversized nonetheless. I'm really hoping the greeter comes out with a pocket version of this. That would be amazing. I've really come around on the Cosmo Beings. I had to like find, I had to find its place in my, in my practice, in my collection. And I really enjoy working with it now. It's got such a fun energy. So I was really curious to see how it would pair with the Citadel, bringing that guiding energy in through the archetype. So we have the wise one with the world and the tower. Tradition and order, mm, absolutely. Um, I've definitely found that the Cosmo Beings is like one of those decks like don't take yourself too seriously. It's okay to have fun and play and I've really enjoyed it. Like now I kind of call it my Marvin the Martian deck. <laughs> I don't know why I have to rename like every deck, right? You know, like Boyfriend deck and Marvin the Martian and I don't know, I have others. But anyway, I, I really do enjoy working with it now. It just took me a while to find my find my way with it. Um, but I thought it would be really cool with the archetypes because it's going to kind of give me a little bit more of something concrete to tap into. So the pilgrim with opportunities and growth and how can I incorporate sort of that play or not taking myself too seriously as I'm on this pil pilgrimage with the six of wands and the ten of cups. I think that's so cool. I really like it, actually. And I think they actually go together really well. Five of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, and the Cartographer. Yeah, this one's cute. I like it. This is like don't take yourself so seriously kind of pairing. That's fun. Everybody needs that in their life, right? I definitely want to make room for don't take myself so seriously, just as much as I'm making room for, you know, rage and play and experimentation and growth and all of that. There's definitely room to just not take it all super seriously as well. The Muse with the Queen of Swords and the Five of Wands. All right, one more. Yeah, this is super cute. Definitely just a fun little pairing. The Sleeper, Cause and Effect and Clarity with the Nine of Wands and the Three of Wands. So fun. Okay, so let's put that right there for right now. And then I do want to take a quick peek at this deck of emblems. Um, I will be honest, I have seen this deck because I've had many of friends show me this deck. Talk about this deck. And several people I know using this for loot deck in our, mem in our fellowship. So same shape beautiful backs look at those gorgeous this ones are black matte edging which i love and if i remember correctly these are like items kind of like item cards which is fantastic and that could definitely be helpful in in gaming as well 
and in gaming related readings. So here we have the bell, signal, alarm, celebration. I mean, I can definitely see working all of these together into a one shot and I'm definitely gonna have to try that. We have blade with conflict, injury, and apprehension. Like I'm, re like, I'm really excited to do a one shot. I wish I had time for it today, but I don't. So um, I didn't, I don't wanna rush it, but I definitely keep an eye out for that because I'm gonna have to do a one shot reading with all these decks. That's gonna be fun. So here we have book, knowledge, history, education, broom, new starts, cleansing, resources, chalice, revelry, intoxication, generosity. I like that there's three keywords. Collar, compliance, duty, restriction. Crown, empowerment, status, authority. Doll with childhood, play, and naivety. Foundation stone with building something, steps, origins. Gate, freedom, open, openness, opportunity. Oh, these are so cool. Helm, navigation, control, journey. Helmet, gardeness, isolation, self-protection. Y'all, I'm gonna have to pull dice into this. You know that's gonna happen. Like, and I've got so many dice sets that'll match. They don't have to match, but I love when my dice match. Okay, this is exciting. Definitely gonna be doing a one shot. Maybe adding in some dice with some dice divination that I've been working on creating. That's gonna be fun. So we have key, the hidden secrets discovery, not stability, security, reliance, letter, news, resolution, communication, locket, commitment, loved ones and partnership, perfume, vanity, deception, performance. Oh, look, it's a boyfriend card. <laughs> Vial, mystery, uh, strangeness, transformation, pomegranate, vitality, sensuality, bodily autonomy. Purse, privacy, finances, a windfall. These are cool. Oh, we got runes. Rune stones, ancient wisdom, fate, divinity. That's cool. Scorpion, danger, accident, subterfuge. Signpost, indecision, multiplicity, crossroads. I love that. We're doing crossroad month in the membership. Uh, songbird, objectification, yearning, and feeling trapped. Interesting keywords. I really like the keywords on this. Stairs with hierarchy, movement, accessibility. Tombstone with death, grief, and legacy. Torch with hope, sight, and clarity. Vase with devastation, loss, and recovery. Veil with the beyond, esoteric, and subconscious. Victuals with substance sharing and sustainability. These are so cool. All right, let's quick peek at the book. Yes, deck of emblems. Card index, love that alphabetical and by number perfect how to use the deck we have emblems as clarifying cards Ooh, that's good to know okay definitely gonna have to play with that um a little bit about reading them independently and then we go into card interpretations so we have a little bit about the card it looks like and then a, a little bit about what it means when it shows up in a reading this is perfect this is perfect yeah okay i'm excited all right uh, we've been here forever but like y'all i just have to try i just have to try we haven't even looked at the book but Let's just do one one because I have no self-control and I'm really excited about this deck For these two decks. I just want to really quickly try a quick little We're gonna do an impromptu one shot That's what's gonna happen I still want to do it pulling in some of the dice divination that I'm working on um, but I will do that in a separate video. I just want to real quickly here. What I want to do is I want to pull an archetype to be a guide in the reading. So let's do that. Let's pull an archetype for our guide in the reading. So we got the wise one with tradition and order. That's going to be our guide. Okay. So like I have, I have, I have a plan. I have thoughts here. I have thoughts and I'm gonna pull one of the deck of emblems for there's like there's so much I could do with this I'm, I'm like real excited to continue to play with it but for right now we're just gonna do a quick quick little one shot I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull one card here we got tombstone with death grief and legacy okay so this is our guiding energy coming into this reading. This is how I'm going to read it. This is the focal point of this reading. And then what do we want to use? Let's just use this Bianco Nero because I want to just do like a traditional Rider-Waite-Smith with it just to um, 
you know, see how it works without pulling in all of the uh, additional energies that I tend to wrap into other decks. So I don't really have any additional significance or added layers that I use when I work with the Bianco Nero. It's just a traditional Rider Waite Smith for me. So I think this would be a good one to test this one shot on, although I will definitely be doing it with my other um, game related decks. So I'm just going to pull a Sotero for each side. Oh, we've got the Nine of Swords and the King of Wands. Oh, definitely getting some energy here around a lot of overwhelming thought processes that are just really keeping us from tapping into that um, structure and the support that we could be getting through this King of Wands that we know we need, right? We know that this energy exists here. We know that we need it, but we can't get past this Nine of Swords energy. I'm saying we, like, this is me, because, uh, like, as I've mentioned a million times on my channel, I, I, I cannot do sample readings. It always calls me out on my crap, so you, this is just me calling myself out with these decks, because that's what I do with tarot. <laughs> so this is really about, I need to bury something, I need to let it go, and until I let it go here, as long as I keep letting it occupy space in my mind, like, a big chunk of space in my mind, I'm not going to be able to move into this energy of position of the hand. I'm getting the kind of channeling from the, the tradition and order of, of the universe, more so than like a particular structure or, you know, type of establishment. I'm getting that more as a, it's feeling more universal to me. And in order to do that and to tap into this King of Wands energy where I'm really comfortable and confident with that work that I'm doing, like I need to let this go. And until I do, none of this is going to happen. That is, that is definitely what I'm getting out of this. How cool are these together? All right. So we have our Citadel. We have our deck of emblems. I'm real excited to play with those. Let's just jump real quick into this book. I put those right in the way. I do that every time. I just want to take a quick, a quick little peek at this, the Spy Master's Gambit. Um, my plant is going to be in the way, but that's okay. All right, we have the map here. I love this, the map of the city. I absolutely love the whole gamified idea behind this. So this really is talking about the campaign and how to play it. I'm 100% going to be doing that at some point. Um, the Spy Master's Gambit is a tale of mystery. The player characters, PCs, are recruited by the spy master to catch a thief, and as they investigate the crime, the PC will get sucked into a conspiracy reaching from the Citadel's dustiest districts to its highest spires. Before the end of it, they'll discover that even their mission is not all that it seems to be. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this. So creating a Citadel player character, creating NPCs, non-player characters. Here's a little bit about expanding your game. Uh, played as a one-shot or as a full campaign. I love that. Here's a note about the backstory. Act one, act two, and then, yeah, this reads a lot like a DD and d uh, book. So this is really cool. So each of these are little, you know, little areas of the... I was going to say dungeon, but of the, the citadel that you're, that you're going through. So you're in the theater... Um, the Arcanum, moving into the garden, it looks like. This is really cool. Okay, I don't want to like give away the end, but I just want to kind of take a quick flip. Okay, some information about the deck of emblems. So I'm guessing that maybe you don't necessarily need. Yeah, it's just telling you you have those things, you can pull those cards, that's awesome. So we have information about those, uh, information about the characters, so the archetypes. Then we have a little bit about um, gaming with the Citadel, so building a location, telling you what to draw and how. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Building an encounter, uh, building a character, and in-game fortune telling. So it can be used for divination as well, so that's really cool. This is really exciting. I cannot wait to dive into these even further. I'm definitely going to be using them in my own sort of uh, tarot adventure that I'm doing. I definitely want to do the Spy Master's Gambit tabletop game. Going to have to give that one a try. And of course, I also want to use these in my readings with my whole deck family that they're going to go with, which is amazing. Definitely going to be doing some one shots with these because these decks are really geared toward that kind of work. And I think it's going to be beautiful and add this whole other layer to my practice, which I'm really 
really excited about. I definitely want to thank Liminal 11 for sending me this deck to share with you today. And I am really excited to actually bring it into my practice as well. So I will be letting you all know as I continue to work with it and get to know it, how it works out for me, what I end up using it for. I'm sure we'll be seeing it again on my channel. If you have these decks or this set, I would love to know what you think about it. So definitely feel free to share with me in the comments. As always, you'll find links for everything I've shared here in the description box of this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.